Hello and welcome to The Valley. Today I am your host, Janet Michael. It is The Valley Business Today, Front Royal Warren County edition. I'm sitting at the Front Royal Warren County Chamber with Nikki Foster is here with me. Although, Nikki, I'm suddenly realizing that we're sitting here at the chamber and you've got this really comfy couch <laughs> and this beautiful rug and this really cool coffee table that folds up into a table and you're sitting at your desk and I'm sitting on a folding chair. What are we thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. And it's still not, it's still not complete. So I think it doesn't, it doesn't look as inviting as it will look <laughs> in another month or so. Oh. And you know what the first thing was I said to you when I walked in? There's not enough orange. Needs more orange. So <laughs> I may have to contribute something. I, I'm going to have to go home and walk through and see what I can give up in my house yeah. to bring here for you to have that pop of orange. Well, and I'm absolutely going to need help with that because <laughs> once we get all the furniture in place and get everything where it needs to go, that's when then I'm going to need to focus on all of those touches. Yes, so. the tchotchkes uh -huh. and the absolutely. other elements that, absolutely. what does it, Joanna Gaines, say that actually make the home? <laughs> yes, and I'm told that I need to have plants. But oh, you no, know. you can't because, <laughs> I mean, yes, but you'll kill them. Yeah. Dead plants, no plants are better than dead plants. Yeah, I'm not a, we know, I can't <laughs> keep things alive like that, plants are not. I think they will actually wilt when I walk past them, <laughs> but there may be plants because I've had a couple of people that have said, oh, if you do that, I'll help you take care of them. Oh, yeah, but everybody um, always says that and never right. say them again. <laughs> yeah, so we'll see. So but the lounge is coming together. It's definitely getting there. I'm having deliveries every day of different things. We had the huge TV delivered yesterday and I'm waiting on a refrigerator and some other things today. So it is definitely coming together. It's very exciting. We're planning an open house for everyone, members and non-members included, at the end of October. So there'll be more about that soon. Smart too. This is giving yourself a deadline. Otherwise, we'd be February and it would still be pieces here and there. Absolutely. Yeah, I can't do that. I've, got to, I've actually got to make it happen. I think it's going to look great. And I think a lot of members are really going to have a huge benefit from being able to get away from their office if they don't have an office to have someplace professional to meet somebody that maybe doesn't require going to a coffee shop where there's a bunch of other people I think it's gonna check a lot of boxes for a lot of people and I so this is selfish on my part Janet and I'm happy for all the members that are gonna be able to use the space and all that but the most important thing to me is I'm actually moving back to my office <laughs> Right, you're gonna get to have your space back and there's been absolutely no reason during COVID of course I moved up here to the front of the building and there's been absolutely no reason that I haven't moved back to my office. I just haven't. And so this will give me the opportunity to move back to my office and have all the comfort that comes with having that space. And having back. your things at your fingertips instead of sitting out here and going, crap, right. now I gotta get up because let me tell you, this building doesn't look very big from the outside, but it's like a 400 mile walk from the lobby back to your office. It's, yeah, it is. It's like my walk from the sofa in the living room <laughs> to my office on the other side of the kitchen. It's, oh, it's so far away. <laughs> it's so far, yeah. But it, we're, it's, as always, we have the boardroom in the back that folks can use, but there's gonna be a lot of smaller spaces that members are gonna be able to use because if they're like me, sometimes they do wanna work out of the office. And it's not always feasible to go to a coffee shop. No. Because I can't go sit down at any of our coffee shops because people see me and then they want to talk and then I want to talk too. So I don't get the work done that I need to get done. So we're going to provide a little bit of that too. We want to have a little lending library. I know you said you might mm -hmm. have some books to donate to that. So yeah, it's going to be great. So speaking of people meeting at a coffee shop, this isn't actually a coffee shop, but you have coffee and conversation. We're sitting here before the Labor Day holiday mm -hmm. recording, but as people are listening on Wednesday, coffee and conversation is this coming Friday. It is, yes, on September 6th. So we do coffee and conversations once a month. We do those at On Cue on Main Street, and it's from 9 to 10. We have a very tight timeline. We keep it. <laughs> You've done much. enough of them now that you can actually say, yes, we do have a very tight timeline. Because yes. sometimes you say that, and then you <laughs> find out six months in, actually, it's longer than that, but yeah. we don't want to tell anybody. That's not yeah. the case. No, we're really careful about the program. So what I'll say is we start on time and we end at 10. Now, folks do stay around and network. They get there a little early and network, and we love that. That's a great thing to do. But we try to be very cognizant of folks' time and our presenter's time as well. So this month, our presenter is... Lauren Kapitschke. Lauren is the planning director for the town of Front Royal. It's a good time for Lauren to be coming to speak with us because the town is getting ready to take on a rewrite of zoning and all of that sort They're of stuff. They're in the midst of a comprehensive plan rework. 
So the comprehensive plan has been approved, oh. and so the zoning rewrite is the next thing. But all of that, of course, goes hand in hand. Lauren will be able to give us a little update on that, answer some questions in regards to that. And so the format of that event, I really like the format of that event. So Rob McDougall, who serves on our business development committee, Rob serves as the moderator. So he'll pose questions to Lauren, Lauren will answer those questions, and then as we get towards the end of the presentation, we'll take a few audience questions. But it's important for people to know that this just isn't an open forum where you're going to be able to ask anything and everything. Right. If you're coming to have a specific question answered, what I would say is that might be something that you want to email to Lauren or make an appointment to speak with Lauren because you might not get your question answered. Right. We're specific to the topic, which of course this time will be the rewrite of the zoning ordinances and such. But it is a good opportunity to see the folks who are in those positions and hear what they're working on currently. It is a great way to make that initial connection. Sure. As someone, and you and I were talking about this before we started recording, I went to my first planning commission meeting for the town of Middletown yeah. a few weeks ago. And I don't know what I expected <laughs> when I got there, but it was not at all mm -hmm. what I expected. Right. But I didn't know who half of those people were. I mean, I'd seen their names on reports and in news sure. articles and things like that, but it wasn't until I actually sat through and got to hear, for example, what the plans are for the Wawa. Mm -hmm. that's literally going to be across my side yard, mm -hmm. and I am one of the few people in Middletown that have no problem with that. Right. I'm going to be able to walk to a Wawa and they can eat that coffee. I'm so excited. Woo. They've got yeah. really good coffee. But it was great to be able to put the faces with the names, and mm -hmm. now I know, based on the different reports they were giving, who I need to direct what questions I have to who. So you don't always just call the town office and ask the random person that answers the phone, hey, I have a question about whether or not I can put a shed in my backyard. You have to talk to the people who know whether or not you can put a shed in your backyard. This is gonna be your opportunity to put that face with a name and maybe get a second to say, who do I call about this? Certainly. Yeah, and she definitely. will be able to direct you in the right direction. Absolutely. We're doing these the first Friday of every month. We've got the rest of the year programmed out and then of course we'll have 2025 programmed out relatively quickly as well. So they've been well attended. It's one of those things where you never know what to expect with the first one. We had great attendance at the first one. So in my mind, when you have great attendance for a first one, you can't necessarily count on the second one being as well attended. However, ours was. So we had almost the exact same number of people, a few different faces, but almost the exact same number of people. So what that tells me is that this is something that people These found. are good topics. Yes. They found value in it and so they returned and we want to keep that momentum up and grow the audience and it's just another way that we can help disseminate the right information out into the community is there a fee to attend do i have to get a ticket there is not do there i have to be not. a chamber member you do not that's the thing about coffee and conversations we want these to be open to not just chamber members not just business owners, but citizens as well. So if you're a retired individual sitting out there listening right now and you live in Front Royal and Warren County, you are more than welcome to come join us and listen to the information, this vital information about our community. It's helpful that you have them on the first Friday of every month because if there is someone out there that works from home, and has a little bit of flexibility, they can start changing their schedule to always work from home on the first Friday of the month and then bounce down for an hour Certainly. to be able to become more engaged, even if they're not at the age of retirement or whatnot. Right, right, yeah. So the antithesis of coffee and conversation <laughs> is business after hours. Is that, that's probably not, sort of, cool. well, um, it's not <laughs> topic centric. It's come out and learn about a new business. This month it's auto care clinic. Meet all the other people. Again, though, you, there's no fee to attend. You don't have to be a chamber member. So those things are in common. Yeah, and so business after hours is really the social hour for the chamber for the month. It's a 90 minute, we try to keep it 5.30 to 7. There's refreshments and there's good networking. There's store prizes and it's just, fellowship. That's really what it's about. Our members have the opportunity to make announcements about things they have going on in their business and we talk a little bit about the other upcoming things. The host of course has a few minutes to talk about their business and again it's just a feel good let's network, let's meet, and make connections, those sorts of things. And in the case of the auto care clinic there's plenty of parking and there's plenty of space Absolutely. for people to mix yes. and mingle. Absolutely. <laughs> and what date is that? That is September 24th so it's Tuesday September 24th 5 30 p.m. 
And then before we go to break, leadership applications are still open as people are listening. They are. So the leadership program is a nine-month program where you study a different aspect of the community monthly, very in-depth. Applications are available on the front page of our website. So if you go to frontroyalchamber.com, click on leadership application, it will take you right to the application. You'll see the schedule in front of you. It is a commitment of a full day a month, but you get a lot of return for that. And it's a fun full day. I know you're getting in the weeds on a lot of sometimes heavy topics. Like you're learning behind the scenes on how the education system works Mm -hmm. in Warren County, how the healthcare system works in Warren County. But at the same time, you're doing it with this group of people that, as I have learned, when the class is over, are the best class of all of the leadership classes. So they really do come together and you make (laughs) lifelong friends. Yes, every class is the best class. <laughs> and I and I don't argue with anybody. Like I let them I let them argue that out and whenever you get a few folks in a room that are from different classes, sometimes a debate ensues. Oh and yeah, I'm, you'll probably hear that more than once at a business after hours. Yeah, <laughs> I stay out of the middle of that, but it's one of our most successful programs and it's very worthwhile and again, not just for business owners, but it's good for citizens as well. Dave McDermott, Dave is a community volunteer who retired right. here to Warren County and then immediately jumped into volunteering. He's basically yeah. got full-time yeah. For the now. record, Dave, if you're listening, I don't want your kind of retirement. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, his retirement is stressful. But he was a retired individual who took the leadership class and now he is one of our biggest cheerleaders. Like He recruits people to the program all the time because he learned so much about the program. And this is great for leaders of nonprofits. It's great for business owners or business leaders to send their staff. Yes. That they think have leadership potential mm-hmm. and they want to feed into that some way. So it's a great way to build up your staff and do professional development as well. Certainly. Absolutely. Let's take a break. Okay. We come back, we'll talk Valor Awards. And I cannot believe in September you're making me do this. <laughs> but we are going to talk about Christmas on Maine. We are. We're going to do all that when we come back in just a couple of minutes. Don't let a cringy DJ ruin your wedding day. Celebrate confidently instead with Summit Events Co., the premier entertainment company in the Shenandoah Valley. Summit Events is serving 200 couples a year with five-star reviewed DJs, photo booths, 360 booths, live music, and more. You can celebrate confidently with Ben Savory, Summit Events founder and chief party officer who was just named the Top of Virginia Entrepreneur of the Year. Don't risk your wedding. Book a professional at summiteventsco.com. That's summiteventsco.com and on Instagram at summiteventsco. Welcome back to the Valley. Today, I am your host, Janet Michael. We are recording at the Front Row Warren County Chamber of Commerce today for the Valley Business Today. Nikki Foster is sitting here with me. We're still in these uncomfortable chairs (laughs) as we look at this really cute teal turquoise sofa staring us in the face. It is really cute. it? It is really cute, and I haven't sat in it to see if it's comfortable, but Unlike my husband, who comfort is the number one thing, for me, aesthetic is more important than comfort because I'll go sit somewhere else. But if I can stand and look at something pretty, it makes me happy. (laughs) Well, I'm happy to report it is also comfortable. So when you sit down in it, you will be pleased. That's the ideal situation. (laughs) So we talked about a bunch of things in the first segment. Coffee and Conversation, September 6th. Business After Hours, Auto Care Clinic, September 24th. Leadership Application Deadline, September 27th. Valor Awards yes. are going to be here before we know it. They're happening on October 3rd. Tickets are available for that now. Yes, tickets are available now. It's October 3rd, 6 p.m. at the Lynx, which is formerly Bowling Green Country Club, the North Building. Richard Runyon, who purchased it probably about a year ago now, has done a total remodel of the building. For those folks who've previously been to Bowling Green but haven't been there yet, you'll remember that there was the glass porch and Mm -hmm. that wasn't even a porch. I'm not sure what that room, but anyway, he's pulled all of that out. He's renovated the rooms and everything. His plan is to have an entire wrap around porch around the entire building, very similar to what he has over at Shenandoah Valley Golf Club. Mm -hmm. He's going to put out in outdoor fire pits and all of the things, beautiful facility. And we're very excited to be one of the first larger events to be happening out there. I saw, and it's funny you say that it has been completely remodeled. I saw a post on Facebook for some event or somebody was there and it said the links and I knew what that was. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at this picture thinking, is it a link somewhere else? 
<laughs> because I thought the Lynx was the old Bowling Green, and that yeah. does not mm-hmm. look like the old Bowling Green. It is stunning, mm-hmm. just the bit of work that he's done already. Yes, it is absolutely stunning. They've done a terrific job with bringing that space into our current times. Like it was you know, very dated. I can envision how great it's going to look when they've completed the porch and all of that stuff. And Valor Awards are another one of those events. We're talking earlier in the segment about how coffee and conversation, you don't have to be a member to participate in that. Business after hours, you don't Mm -hmm. technically have to be a member for that. But this whole Valor Awards thing, you don't have to be a member to buy a ticket and come and honor public safety personnel in our area. We wouldn't be doing our public safety folks a service if we said this was a member in the event. So yeah, for Valor Awards, you absolutely, you can be anybody. You can purchase tickets to bring your friends and family and come to the event. You can purchase tickets and then donate them back for use for first responders and their families so they can come and be part of the night. This is always a very uplifting event. To see all of these individuals who put their lives on the line for us every day in sometimes very simple situations and sometimes very intense chaotic situations and so I'm really pleased that we have the opportunity to be a part of recognizing these individuals and sharing their stories with the community. The thing I think too that makes it even more endearing when you're sitting watching it unfold before you is that very few of these first responders expect or want any kind of recognition or awards. Mm -hmm. So they're there, hey, this is my job. This is what I signed up to do. Yeah, running into that burning building isn't something for everybody, but this is what I do for a living and I will willingly go and do it. I don't need a pat on the back afterwards. I don't need you to hand me a trophy. And it is so cool to watch when they get one anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. And and that mindset of they're serving regardless. Like they don't even, it's not a second thought for them, like you said, to run into a burning building or all of the other insane things that they do or things that seem insane to us right. it's second nature for them and to again be able to recognize them for those things is really special and they don't expect it and when we're talking public safety personnel I always default to fire and rescue because sure, that's where my heart is yes but it's also law enforcement it's so law enforcement police sheriff it can be park service personnel and then there's other categories of folks too, like from the private sector, just to use an example, last year we had a couple of teenagers that were recognized at the Valor Awards because they had helped a woman at a high school basketball or football game, she was choking and they had performed the Heimlich Maneuver. Oh. So there's those sorts of things too. So if you jump into action, again, when you don't have to, mm-hmm. to do something like that, being able to recognize people for that is important. And I don't think any of us realize how often that happens. Mm -hmm. I was having a conversation with your counterpart in Winchester, Mm -hmm. Cynthia, from Top of Virginia Regional Chamber, and we were talking about the fact that a lot of those things don't actually make the news. They don't make the paper. They don't make any kind of news story, Mm -hmm. national or local. And Mm -hmm. you have no idea how often somebody is stepping up to help someone, save someone, do something for someone that we never even know about. And these awards allow you to bring that to life. That's a really good point. And what if those things were highlighted more? What would the narrative of everything look like? So, Jerry Manico's not getting an award, is he? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I can't tell you. <laughs> I don't you. think he deserves one. <laughs> I had to throw that in there. He would be so disappointed if he didn't get some sort of shout out if we're talking about right, Well, yeah, we have, we have to talk about Jerry. And Jerry, if you're listening, that tub of stuff that you said you were coming to get out of this space <laughs> for your side business is still here. It's still here, Jerry, my attic. I don't come get it. <laughs> but leave the sofa. Do not touch the sofa. It is staying where it's at. Yeah, he hasn't come in when the sofa's been here yet, so I fully expect him to lay Come in and flop and do all of the things. The, oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but it will likely be Christmas before he rolls in. <laughs> and I'm only saying that so that I then have a segue to talk about, to talk about Christmas. Christmas on Maine. And yeah. so, again, I'll remind people we're sitting here before the Labor Day holiday. And you were telling me that last night, so we're sitting here on Friday before Labor Day, and you last night created the event on Facebook for Christmas on Maine Mm -hmm. and didn't invite anybody, just Mm -hmm. under the radar, created the event and threw it out there. And overnight, Mm -hmm. 
There are like 500 people yes. who have already said that they are interested or coming. You've gotten sponsors reach out and say, hey, we're on the list to renew again this year, right? You've gotten vendors that have already signed up. <laughs> Yeah, and it's been about 12 hours since I worked. I worked late last night, and we try to keep that merry market to between 25 and 30 vendors because we're limited space. We've already sold 10 of those vendor spaces and renewed five of our sponsorships from last year. And those sponsorships are they're first come first serve, of course. And last year we sold them out in three weeks hoping for that sort of success again this year but like you said I purposely didn't do any inviting to the mm -hmm. event because I just wanted to see from an organic perspective what it would look like this morning and it has exceeded <laughs> what I thought it would look like this morning. And it's a good reminder to people that pumpkin spice is everywhere but planning is so very important so while I'm giving you grief that we have to talk about Christmas mm -hmm. in early September from a business owner yes. perspective from a nonprofit planning events for the holidays, you gotta be working on that stuff now because if you wait until you feel like it's appropriate to be talking about Christmas, you've lost the momentum. That's such a great point, Janet, because think about we're sitting here at the dawn of September, right? And it feels like it was just Valentine's Day. <laughs> right. And so it goes by so quickly. We just had 100 degree days. One of the days, yeah, I think it was almost 100 degrees yesterday. I'd love to say that I were the first one, but I'm going to be really honest. Some of my neighbors, I'm looking at you, Olivia Hilton, <laughs> they were the reason that I felt the need to jump on this because a month ago, she had already started yes. marketing. So, you know, that it's not out of the ordinary, but you, yeah, you've got it. You've got to stay in front of it. You can't let it get in front of you. And there are so many events. It's the good and the bad, I think, mm -hmm. of the Shenandoah Valley in general, is that every single town has a holiday celebration. Certainly. Some of them have parades, some of them have markets, some of them have just other mm -hmm. events, and it's hard to get to all of them. Certainly. So you got to get yours out there mm -hmm. so that people can see it and put it on the calendar first sure. before they put something else on the calendar. Now you've lost them as a customer for your vendors, mm -hmm. as an attendee at your parade, any of those things. Right. Yeah. It's good that we live in an area that's so active, but for those of us who are event organizers, you're absolutely right. Yeah. We have to stay on top of our game because to a certain degree, we're all competing for a similar audience. But at the same time, when we're having an event here and then the following weekend, Winchester's having their parade or whatever, my hope is that people are going all across the valley. They're parade hopping. Yes. Like they do it fireworks and right. all of the yeah. other things. Yeah. <laughs> and that makes sense. And just to be clear, organizations and businesses can start planning for the holidays and still complain about the fact that in early September Halloween stuff, and Christmas stuff and Thanksgiving stuff is showing up in the retail stores. It's okay to be yes. planning and complaining at the same Absolutely, time. Absolutely, <laughs> because you know me, I'm a Halloween right. girl. And I want Halloween to be able to have its time to shine <laughs> and not be mixed up with Christmas. Or I'm, in this case now, it's Labor Day. <laughs> I mean, I, I want Halloween stuff to be on the shelves by itself for a while, and that's not happening because Christmas stuff is already out there too, so yeah. So how can people reach out to you? If somebody's listening and they're like, I wanted to be a sponsor for that last year yeah. and I waited too long. Now is the time. How do they get in touch with you? So, of course, on the website, you can go to the website and click on the Christmas event link and all of those things, the application for the parade, for the market, for sponsorship, all of that's there. You can also shoot us an email at info at frontroyalchamber.com and I'm happy to send the information to you. And if you want to call, you can call too at 540-635. You can also come have a seat on the turquoise sofa yeah. and yell and say, hey, Nikki, I'd like to be a vendor at yeah. the Mary Market. They can absolutely do that. Just don't judge the way things look right now. <laughs> no, I right. assure you in another 30 days, things are going to look much different. Right now, it's a little bit of chaos happening here. Yeah, because Jerry Manico won't come get his box of stuff. I, it's, it's all Jerry's all, fault. It's all his fault. It's all Jerry's fault. Yes. <laughs> and all the things that we've talked about today, they can find in a number of different places. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
on the website, of course, on the website calendar. You can also sign up to get the newsletter, so it's pushing to you every week. And again, you can shoot an email to info at frontroyalchamber.com, give us a call, however. And when we're talking about businesses and encouraging them to start thinking about the holidays now, that newsletter is a valuable marketing tool because people should be putting those together and sending you, hey, this is when our event's gonna be, and get it in that newsletter now, again, to get that word out so people oh, can put it on their calendar. Absolutely, that, again, getting ahead of everybody else in your marketing and also paying attention to the other things that are happening either on the same day that you're doing something or around the same time you're doing it, those sorts of things. So you wanna be cognizant of that too, because if you're competing with an event that's very similar to yours, you could run into trouble. Thank you for Thank you. having me over and I'm gonna go sit on the turquoise sofa now. Okay, I think that's a great <laughs> idea. Thank you, Janet. I will be back tomorrow with a brand new episode of The Valley today. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. It is not live. So I'm sitting here with Nikki on Friday before Labor Day. I think on Tuesday after Labor Day, I'm meeting guys at the station to record because he had a trip planned and wasn't gonna be available to do the live show. I got a text last week that now that trip has been rescheduled and he is available, but now I'm not because I'm getting my electric panel box replaced on Thursday. So I don't know what we're gonna talk about. I have an idea, but you'll have to tune in tomorrow to find out a few minutes after noon.